so I just want to start off by an intro. I'm going to be painting the um, Iron Man snap and I'll include a picture of uh, how the actual model looks because its head's covered in blue tack. Um, what I'd like to do with it is to create a really battle damage approach because of course it's the, the end of the, the film. Um, I used to do this quite a lot with a lot of my Warhammer models. I'll just try and take off a panel just so you can maybe see. Um, it creates quite a nice, in this case, rusted. I want to create the same effect but with a silver uh, colour instead of brown underneath. So to do this, um, I need a couple of things. Uh, the first thing I've done is coated it with my undercolour. So for this I want to use chrome, so I sprayed it with a metallic. Um, on this I sprayed it with a brown with little speckles of green to create a rust effect. Once that's covered, um, I then just covered the head just because I don't want to get too much, uh, too many layers on it for the moment. Um, and I didn't spray chrome on it either. I then sealed it with a clear seal. The next things that I need are a firm hold hairspray and some rock sea salts. And they've got to be rocks um, and it does have to be firm hold from, from what I've read and from experience. So I just want to get some of that cracked up into a bowl. I've already got some ready. Um, and the aim for me is to get a lot of small, very small rocks and near you know, salt consistency and a couple of slightly bigger rocks as well. So you can see I've got enough sand in there. Because a couple of them are a little bit big, I'm just going to kind of uh, is it pummel it down. So to the point that I'm happy. So once I've got my, my outside, um, I'm only doing this very a very short moment and then I'm gonna go outside to do it or do it where you have a solid extractor fan. I will be doing my airbrushing, but for things like hairspray and sealants, I don't care, do it outside. Um, so that's what I'll say there. Um, I'm gonna pick a piece and I ideally work in sections, but I wanna complete the whole model before the next, um, next process. But I will decide, let's say this piece here, so I've got quite a bit of key damage. So if I just spray the front of the model with the hairspray, now, a liberal coat, so you know, it, there's enough that this salt, this salt will now stick onto it. Keep it in a position that's, that's relevant, obviously, so you don't want it to be facing up just yet. Let it stick to the, um, the spaces. And you can hopefully see that I'm trying to pick out the most damage areas um, but still, you know, speckling it round so it's not just completely condensed in one space. Hopefully now you can see on the chest what I mean. That, that firm hold hairspray has created a sticky surface. Um, but of course, because I've added the chrome first and then the, the matte acrylic seal, um, once this dries, um, I can then airbrush over it, but it will still come off without affecting the undercoat. So hopefully as I go through, you'll see, you'll understand the process. Um, I'm now just going to go off outside and finish this properly. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how it looks. Um, I put it on quite liberally, so as much as possible, um, just because throughout the process I, could, I prefer to put on more and take some off, and as I use the airbrush it's naturally going to take some off anyway. Um, if I was using more colours um, I might just try to mask some off now, but instead I'm just going to do all of the red, then cover it up and then focus on the gold. So. These are the two pieces, and you can see I've tried to create some quite strong focal points in the salt, and then still just keeping it scattered around. And for the moment, you can see I've really only focused the salt approach on, sorry, on the red space, so just the, uh, the, crotch, the crotch area. About all the noise, um, the hairspray is now dried and the salt's, you know, relatively stuck onto it. Um, it come off with enough of a brush with a finger. Um, I've got Mephiston Red and a uh, metallic medium in the airbrush. Uh, just a little bit of the metallic medium. I'm hoping it will just add a bit of the effect. And I now just want to kind of carefully go over it. You can see I'm going over the rocks in the same way. It's just the rocks themselves will stop the uh, paint touching the, uh, sorry, the silver. And so once I'm ready with, once I'm done with the colour, um, I can then go over and brush the rocks. So I'll go around now and just start uh, finishing off this red. 
So um, hopefully you can now see, I've got a pretty good red coverage over it. I mean, it looks like there's no salt, but there's still all over it. Um, I've now gone up to a uh, Evil Sun Scarlet, again, mixing in a bit of the airbrush uh, metallic medium, and of course, some thinner as well. Uh, and this time I'm, I'm just trying to get, uh, sorry, it's gonna get a bit noisy, but I'm just gonna get some of the, uh, the higher, um, higher edges, just adding a little bit of a highlight before we brush off the salt. What we see, I'm not being too precise. Um, this isn't something you need to have a, like an air rushing skill for. You just want to try and get some of the, the front spaces just to bring out a bit of depth on the model. Um, remembering some of this isn't, isn't red. Finally, a quick one over with uh, Wild Rider Red. So just uh, the very, very uh, top. Just to hope you add Bit of a central highlight in the Right, so I just want to give you a quick view. Um, the, the paint's now dried. I've got a little bucket of water here, but I would uh, normally do this uh, over the tap. Just want to just kind of give you a view of what I'm doing. Wet my brush a little bit, and I just want to kind of start edging some of this um, the, the salt pieces off. And hopefully you see as each of those pieces comes off, and you might have to like brush your brush, get, get some of that salt off. We'll start to see this this damage effect slowly appear. Clean my brush. You might have to go through the, over this a few times because otherwise you don't want to leave pieces of salt on. Um, it will just create quite a <clears throat> an odd effect having a, like lumps on the model. So you do need to really make sure you're getting all the salt off. Um, I want to kind of give you a view. You can start to see now how it's creating this like randomized um, chipped effect all over the red. So I am going to go to the tap now just to make my life a bit easier. <clears throat> it's now just drying from the water just used to uh, brush off the salts. You kind of see the effect that I'm starting with. It's just kind of creating that sporadic um, chipped effect focused on some of the areas where I really focus the uh, salts. Definitely put too much on the uh, the crotch area so I do I will go around and need them up. Um, but, but now, uh, once it fully dries, I'm just going to go around with blue tack and um, cover all of the red. So the parts are all uh, strapped up now, or just covering all the red parts. Um, because of course I've got some red now on this silver, uh, when I add the gold I don't want to see any red underneath. So I'm just going to go outside um, and reapply some chrome. So I've uh, reapplied the chrome and the matte acrylic over the top of the chrome once it's dried um, just so again I've got that base silver to work off. Um, I'm now going to essentially repeat the same process so I won't bore you with it but cover with a firm coat um, hairspray, sprinkle the salt, once that's dry I'm going to come back first layer with Retributor Armor Gold and then I'm just doing a second layer with Auric Armor Gold. So um, I've applied the uh, hairspray and the sea salt and it's all now dry and I've got my uh, first layer of Retributor armour, I'm just going to start laying it over. Okay so the uh, Retributor armour is now dry and I've got, I've got the Auric armour, slightly lighter gold, and I'm just going to try and slowly bring that up over the top. So I'm now going to go to my sink uh, in the same way I did before, having water on the brush, maybe a little bit of water just tripping over, tripling over it. And just slowly now brushing over until I loosen up those rocks. As you see, they start to come off. So uh, this is kind of how it's starting to look now. Taking obviously all the pieces off, it's pretty much dry. Um, I'm just going over with some iron breaker. So before I add a wash, I feel like the, um, the silver needs a little bit of neatening up. So particularly where I can see these lines, sorry, I can see these lines and some of these scratches here. I'm just going through them now and just making sure they're as pronounced as possible. So particularly getting the, the shapes um, 
it just yeah in all the spaces so I'm just going to go around the black uh, sorry with the silver and then I'm going to apply a black wash to the whole model back to painting mode now um, I've essentially just added in the iron breaker um, so just silver paint into any of these cracks um, any larger areas and the um, arc reactor and so for now uh, you probably might have noticed but I completely forgot to do the back of the legs in red so I've just coated those with a, red, uh, a coat of red paint um, I'll kind of neaten up the, the silver as I go along but as it's pretty much the back of the model I'm not too worried so um, yeah if you are going to do this try and of course just mask the middle and do the same process on the red on the legs so now um, I've just mixed up some uh, black wash so for me with a black uh, dipping formula and some water and I'm now going to wash the entire model um, excluding the, the, the skin so the face the uh, black wash has now dried and I hope you can see it's just brought a bit of the um, kind of just brought the model out really um, I now just find obviously it's a bit darker I'll be honest I'd be happy with this as it is but I think it's nice just now to go back with some of the reds really watered down um, start to build up a little bit of a highlight so it's going to very very carefully you can see hopefully how watered down it is I don't want to touch any of the silver that's kind of the main point of this just going around and building up a slight highlight of the red this is a not necessarily a fun or um, fast process but I find it just adds to the, the light effect um, um, as opposed to it looking a bit bit flatter I don't think I've fully got the ability to bring things up as, as high as I'd like yet and make it look natural but so far this is probably the best I can do hope you can get the idea um, I've spent about half an hour just going around with the Evil Sun Scarlet um, as I mentioned I've watered it down but I've actually been using airbrush thinner as opposed to water just in a, in a separate part of the pot um, I just find it it's it just makes it much smoother um, so yeah I find this is just now neatened it up um, I now want to use my Wild Rider Red exactly the same process a little bit of paints, a little bit of air thinner. So I do want it really, really thin now. Probably even thinner than I had the previous paint. Um, and then this time I really just want to touch upon some of those sharpest corners. It's really just a spring some life out of the model. So I'm just going to go round. Um, as many of these sharpest corners as possible and also I've been leaving the neck because obviously I haven't uh, painted the head yet so um, I'm going to paint the head and then come back and neaten up around the neck but I'll just finish off the uh, last layer on the red uh, with the wild rider red you now get an idea I've quickly touched up the face but I went around with the wild rider red you can just see some of these very light lines just touching up some of those areas hope you see that kind of orangey tint so i find that when you really water it down instead of it being like a stark orange line it just becomes this little bit of a tint that sits around just creating a bit of a two-tone effect on the on the on the red um as i said i also added a base to the face which was bugman's glow mixed with a bit of cadian flesh tone i want to add a little bit of a highlight to the gold uh, so i'm just going straight to the auric armor gold and same as essentially what i did with the um the wild rider red i just want to add in and i hardly watered this down because i find it's already quite a thin layer paint um but i just want to add a few highlights to where i don't think it, it really brought the gold out again i'm still being careful of the silver um but as i said i just want to kind of make sure that from the front of the model it has a little bit more definition on the gold so I'm done with the red and the gold um, I have been working on the legs as well um, I wasn't happy with about this point it, there was a lot of a um, bit too much red so I've just stabbed over with a silver silver on the brush just to kind of help with the effect it's not exactly the same but 
I'd say I'm done for now. What I'm going to do is go and work on the Infinity Stones, the Arc Reactor, and the face and hair. Once I've got all that done, I'm going to come back and then kind of revisit the whole model.